Hello everyone, welcome to a lecture on uh, muscle tissue. So we're going to have to understand the muscle tissue and the types of muscle tissue before we get into the skeletal muscle and memorizing, and <clears throat> excuse me, naming all the skeletal muscle in the body. Alright, so what is muscle tissue? Well, muscle tissue is any tissue in humans that is contractile and locomotes parts of the body. Locomotes means moving the parts of the body. There are three different types that we'll discuss. Uh, that are in humans, uh, which is smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and skeletal muscle. All right, now let's start with smooth muscle. It's uh, the simplest type of muscle, uh, uh, which is subjective, obviously, but they're very different from both cardiac and skeletal in that they contain no sarcomeres in the traditional sense. Now, smooth muscle is uh, always involuntary, uh, and instead they contract out filaments uh, for sarcomeres. Instead, they contract out filaments around the cell in a net-like matrix. So you can kind of see here the contractile filaments that wrap around the cell and kind of contract it. If you've ever seen those stress balls with nets around them, you squeeze them and they look like little grapes. That's kind of what happens. Now, the cell appears fusiform uh, and kind of similar uh, in 2D projection to a squamous cell. So if you were to look at a squamous cell on a flat piece of paper, it would look similar to a smooth muscle, but they're different. Uh, they're fusiform. So now let's examine the innervation patterns. And one more thing here, the thin filaments, uh, commit to memory that the thin filaments are actin and the thick filaments are myosin. All right, so let's look at the smooth muscle communion, as like I like to call it. Uh, uh, it's important to know that smooth muscle can be both individually innervated and interconnected via gap junctions. So in this one right here, we're interconnected via gap junctions because... Um, the number of motor axons that uh, all the cells in this group have are less than the actual number of cells, which means that they are, have groups of different cells. So groups of smooth muscles connected together by gap junctions uh, um, all contract simultaneously because they spread the action potential uh, and electric uh, depolarization between the cells uh, and are known as a syncytium. So this is a syncytium right here. This wouldn't be a syncytium because each cell has their own innervation here. A cluster of smooth muscle cells that are individually innervated are known as a multi-unit, so this is a multi-unit. And a cluster of smooth muscle cells that are interconnected by gap junctions are known as a, a single unit uh, or visceral smooth muscle. That will be the visceral lining of a lot of the organs. Alright, and then here's some histology, but we wouldn't know that right now. Alright, so let's get into cardiac muscles. A cardiac muscle, I believe, uh, subjectively, of course, is in between, uh, in terms of complexity, uh, smooth muscle and uh, skeletal muscle. And as the name implies, cardiac muscles are only found in the heart. And uh, much like smooth muscle, cardiac muscle is involuntary. So it's not under our voluntary control. We can't control it. And nor would you want to because you would forget about it and then you would die uh, immediately. So you leave the calculations in your brain, you leave it to your brain for your heart to properly pace itself. Cardiac muscles are connected by branching cells and unique structures known as intercalated discs. Uh, we'll talk about that after we finish this. Which is, uh, they are rich in gap junctions, the intercalated discs. Remember, gap junctions spread electrical impulses or uh, depolarization signals throughout the axon. Cardiac muscles may be binucleated or mononucleated. This is important to know because they are not restricted to one nucleus, but they usually are restricted to only two, max. It's located in the myocardium of the heart. So if you look right here, the layers of the heart, uh, we have the um, endocardium, myocardium, uh, and pericardium. And this would be the myocardium, the thickest part. Cardiac muscles do contain sarcomeres, and thus they are uh, lightly striated, not as much as skeletal muscles. We will discuss sarcomeres more closely later, where it is more relevant in uh, the skeletal muscle section. So let's look here at the intercalated disc right here. It's a very, very prominent. Uh, and in a real cell, more detailed, it kind of be like zigzagged, connected in more surface area to create more gap junctions uh, and uh, stronger connections. Now, why would you think a, a heart would need more gap junctions between the intercalated discs? Well, if you think about it, um, the heart's uh, contraction relies on uh, the atrial and ventral depolarizations to happen almost immediately. So if, in order for that, um, say for the ventricle, in order for the Purkinje fibers to spread that uh, ventricular depolarization, 
effectively and quickly and all at once, there would need to be a lot of uh, gap junctions between the individual cells so that way they can all contract at once and provide an efficient contraction. All right, but you don't even know about this physiology. But here is a, a branching cell. And it basically forms like a net between uh, different lines of cells, I guess. And these are also called fibromyocytes or cardiomyocytes. And they have nuclei, and some of them have two nuclei, such as right here. That's supposed to be a branching cell, not an anching cell. I don't know what happened there. Okay, skeletal muscles. The skeletal muscle is the most common and numerous type of muscle tissue in the body. In my opinion, it's the most advanced in terms of complexity. Unlike cardiac or smooth muscle, skeletal muscle is under voluntary control via the motor neurons. Important exceptions or considerations are the cremasteric muscle and the diaphragm, uh, which are both voluntary and involuntary. Now, the cremasteric muscle controls the height of the testicles in males, and at first glance, they're pretty involuntary. Like, if you look at them, they move on their own. Um, but it's actually both because there are some motor neurons. Some men can actually control them. Skeletal muscles have peripheral nuclei and are multinucleate. So there are many nuclei in one myofiber. Um, and they're placed off to the sides of peripheral. Now the functional or contractile unit of a muscle is the sarcomere, which will be discussed lastly. Uh, and myofibers are covered by the sarcolemma, which is just the equivalent of a, the membrane of the muscle cell. Now let's look at the hierarchy of a muscle cell. So this thing, we have the whole muscle, we just call it the muscle, right? But each of these little groups of muscle that uh, make up uh, the entire muscle, uh, you can pull one out. This is called a fascicle, which is a bundle of even further uh, myofibers, which are the individual cells. So these are the myocytes or the myofibers. If you pull a myofiber out, we can further divide it. Uh, um, and the myofibers or myocytes, they have unique cells or unique organelles known as myofibrils. And these myofibrils, if you take it out even more, then we'd have the filaments actin and myosin, which we'll get into when we get into sarcomeres. The myofibrils contain uh, all the sarcomeres. Let's just go back. Uh, there's also some membranes and connected tissue around the muscle that you should know or be familiar with. Now, the membrane or connected tissue that surrounds the whole muscle is known as the epimysium. And the uh, membrane that actually covers the individual fascicles are known as the perimysium. So you see right here. And then the, the connected tissue that surrounds the actual myofiber uh, is known as the endomysium. Now, what surrounds the myofibrils? Well, that's ridiculous because myofibrils, they can't be connected tissue without any cells. And myofibrils, they don't have any cells. They're just an organelle of the myofiber. All right, let's talk about innervation. So skeletal muscle is a muscle class that is individually innervated, meaning uh, each myofiber has their own motor axon. Well, what does that mean? Well, right here, that's a motor axon. Uh, and this is a muscle cell, this is the muscle cell. They each have their own axon uh, associated with it. Now, a motor neuron in all the myofibers that innervates is called a motor unit. So this is a motor neuron, and it's innervating these two. They get their own innervation, so this is a motor unit. Uh, all the synaptic clefts, which we have synapse here, and there's a cleft in between the cell, uh, the postsynaptic cell and the presynaptic, or I'm sorry, the synapse, uh, that's the synaptic cleft. Now, all the myofibers, um, all, I'm sorry, the synaptic clefts of the motor axon, are, they're collectively known as the neuromuscular junction. So right here would be the neuromuscular junction. Now think, why is each muscle cell individually innervated rather than a syncytium? Well, when you think about it, uh, a sarcomere, which we'll get into later, uh, it contracts. It, there's no like continu continuity with the contraction. It's all or nothing. So it either completely contracts or it doesn't. So we think that if we had a syncytium with muscle cells, skeletal muscle cells, your entire muscle would contract. And if you try to lift your bicep, it would instantly contract and fly off everywhere. Well, that's not really helpful, is it? So we want to have motor neurons to control only parts or contract only some myofibers rather than all of them at once. All right, let's get into the sarcomere now. This is pretty crazy, but we'll get we'll kind of clear this up as best we can here. Remember that the sarcomere is the smallest contractile unit of both uh, skeletal and cardiac muscle. Sarcomere contains two primary filaments, uh, actin and myosin. Now, actin is this thin filament here, and myosin is a thick one in the middle. Myosin is the larger of the two, and it's always static, so it never moves during contraction. 
Uh, myosin is the larger of the two, or sorry, actin is the smaller of the two and is motile, meaning it moves during contraction. Actin always slides past myosin, never the other way around, and then it makes the muscle short. The muscles get short when you contract them. Two proteinous discs, known as Z-discs, or formerly the CAPC protein, on either side of the sarcomere are brought together, uh, or brought closer together, rather, uh, during the contraction of the muscle. Titan is the less prominent protein, but it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a tendon, if you will, like a micro tendon uh, that kind of anchors myosin to the Z disc. Now, Z discs are responsible for the striated appearance of both skeletal and cardiac muscle, which we'll get into when we get into histology. All right, now let's look at the physiology, a little bit of the physiology, because it might have to extend into your anatomy class. Well, this is actin, right? And then when it contracts, so what do we notice about the sarcomere? Well, it gets shorter. Um, the z discs are brought together, um, uh, but this uh, myosin is staying in the same place. So we can infer that um, uh, the actin is the only one that moves, only part of the sarcomere that moves. And now the titan it also moves, but you don't really know that for your intro college anatomy course. All right, now we have different zones that describe the sarcomere. We have the I-band, um, which consists only of the uh, thin filaments. Then we have the H-zone, which is consisting only of the myosin, and then the uh, other I-band. Now in between these two, we'd have uh, the A-zone, which is both thin and thick. But probably you won't need to know that because it's not really prominent. The A zone would be like from the H zone all the way to the I band. Don't remember exactly because it wasn't really of significance. Uh, now the M line is just the middle line of the sarcomere. Remember this is actin, this is myosin. Myosin is the bigger of the two and usually it'll be labeled red. All right, now let's get into the histology. Now, Let's kind of narrow it down here. Now, it's kind of irregular. It's not really straight. It's not really uh, parallel with uh, everything else. Uh, so what kind of tissue would this be? Well, we can examine. You can see kind of, they're kind of clustered together, right? And there's kind of little gaps and stuff. And some of them are kind of contracted over here. You can kind of see. Well, if you try to find an individual cell, you can see right here, it's kind of fusiform in shape. And the only thing that's, only the muscle tissue that has fusiform cells are, um, smooth muscle cells. So this would be a smooth muscle slide. And they all have one nucleus only. Now, it would be common for people to answer skeletal muscle here, but what do we learn about cardiac muscle that we can use to differentiate? Because uh, cardiac muscle looks very similar to skeletal muscle. Well, the nuclei, nuclei are centrally placed, so that can't be a skeletal muscle. And we also have the intercalated discs right here, which are very prominent. So this must be cardiac because there's also branching cells right here. You can kind of see it. And there's also um, larger nuclei. Remember, in that muscle cells are kind of peripherally placed. So this has got to be cardiac. And you can kind of see the striations. And what did we say formed them? We said the Z-discs right here because they run kind of like that. They run more transversally. That's what makes up those striations. You see those micro striations. Not the intercalated discs, but the striations run in the same direction as the intercalated disc. Did. Now, what about this one? Well, this is, uh, well, we might think cardiac at first, right, when we looked at it before, but it's actually skeletal. And why? Well, you can see that each of the myofibers, um, or the myofibers, um, there are nuclei, there are many nucle they have many nucleus. The my myofibers have many nuclei. Um, and they're placed off to the side, they're peripheral. So this must be a skeletal muscle cell or skeletal tissue. Many nuclei are placed off to the side. And I want you guys to appreciate that there are many striations formed by the Z discs. All right. Well, that's pretty much skeletal muscle. And I will see you in, uh, when we hone down more on skeletal muscle in the next video. And then we will learn uh, how to name them in the future. All right. Thank you, guys. See ya.